Revelation is um, our subject. Uh, doctrine, <coughs> you may have noticed um, if you've been around the church uh, for any length of time, well, you would know that there's been a serious decline uh, in doctrine, uh, the study of, uh, the reading of, even a disinterest in reading, you know, good subject matter. Uh, most of it superficial um, and doctrine uh, even is you know um, uh, classed uh, you know to be for men only not for ladies there's a serious lack of doctrinal preaching in the church and of course um, of doctrinal reading amongst the saints of God and if we are to be rescued from the condition that we find ourselves in today uh, this state of uh, decline, uh, apostasy even, dare I say. Um, there's a lot of talk about um, revival, reformation and such. But unless there's a resurgence of doctrine, serious study of and preaching of and learning of doctrine, well, I'm afraid that reformation and revival just ain't going to be, you know. There's going to be a change, uh, the word the Bible uses for that um, is the word repentance. There has to be a change of mind, a reformation, if you like, of the mind, leading to um, a serious uh, consideration of doctrine. And the doctrine that um, I want to begin with um, here on this occasion is that of Revelation. In the Westminster, Westminster Confession of Faith, chapter 1, you will find the most wonderful, exquisite um, um, definition, if you like, of, of Holy Scripture. I mean, it truly is amazing. You will not find anything to surpass this. Listen. Although the light of nature and the works of creation and providence do so far manifest the goodness, wisdom and power of God as to leave men unexcusable, yet are they not sufficient to give that knowledge of God and of his will which is necessary unto salvation. Therefore it pleased the Lord at sundry times and in divers manners to reveal himself and to declare that his will unto his church and afterwards for the better preserving and propagating of the truth and for the more sure establishment and comfort of the church against the corruption of the flesh and the malice of Satan and of the world to commit the same wholly unto writing which maketh the holy scripture to be most necessary those former ways of God's revealing his will unto his people being now ceased. Isn't that wonderful, glorious? I mean, the fact that God reveals himself, you know, is a wonder. You know, uh, God is sufficient in and of himself. He wants for nothing. He doesn't need you. He doesn't need me. He doesn't need anything outside of himself. And yet, he has chosen to reveal himself through creation, that is, through his works. Read, for instance, Psalm 19 which is um, a beautiful psalm. We are only his creatures. We are less than dust. He is infinite. He is eternal. He is beyond human comprehension. We could never, never know him in any way, shape or form at all unless he had chosen, graciously chosen, to reveal himself. God is spirit. He is invisible. Um, and to come to this realization that God has revealed himself um, and that of course in a way that the simplest of us even a child can understand astonishing when we realize that he's revealed himself to sinners rebels enemies enemies of God who have broken his covenant trashed his law underfoot Grace. Grace. That's what grace is. Then when we realize 
that God's purpose in revealing himself ultimately is the salvation of a people for himself. Not everyone, not every man head for head, every woman head for head, but chosen a people out of the human race, out of this world, he has chosen to reveal himself for this purpose of redeeming such a people. And so we learn that God in Revelation, he has revealed himself in creation and of course in Holy Scripture. The Bible tells us in the past times, the Old Testament dispensation, that God revealed himself through you know, dreams, visions, prophecies and such like. Hebrews chapter 1 uh, tells us, but now in these last days God has revealed himself in his son Jesus Christ. The New Testament record, the word of God, the scriptures and the scriptures alone. We realise we know that the arc work and design of the works of God, the world in which we live, um, reveals creation reveals to us there's an artist behind the artistry a designer behind the design but sinful man has corrupted even that revelation even that leaves us more guilty because of our corruption because of our sinfulness because of our rebellion because of our anarchy because of our are suppressing the truth of the knowledge of God in unrighteousness, as the New Testament tells us. Now, man's become blinded to the reality of God himself and what man himself is. So, the works of God, the creation of God, all that's, ref all that's um, in theological terms, is referred to as God's general revelation. It's creation, you know, the works of God's hands, everything that God has made, you know, as <clears throat> distinct from his special, his saving revelation, found, of course, in the word of God. In Romans chapter 1 and verse 20, um, we're told there, of course, by Paul the Apostle that, you know, God is known by the things that he has made. And that leaves us without that leaves us without, that in itself leaves us without any excuse. But um, a thing is proved, a thing is, is, is a matter is, is authenticated by, by two witnesses, the law of God tells us. And so there's two witnesses there, you see, uh, God has revealed us, himself in us. We have an innate knowledge of God. Every man, woman and child born into this world has an innate knowledge of God. And then also, of course, general revelation, the creation of God, the works of God. But the general, general God's general revelation, you see, there's not an ounce, there's not one iota of salvation in that general revelation. There's no person... There's not even grace in it. It's the revelation, Paul tells us, of the wrath of God because of man's suppression of the truth and unrighteousness. Romans 1 verse 18. Paul is very clear. Read Romans chapter 1 for yourself. It's very revealing. You see, Paul tells us there, there's no such thing as an atheist on planet Earth. Not a single one. Even though, even... Even sinners the world over, you know, in places where they've never seen a Bible, they've never seen a confession of faith, they've never seen a church, even they are condemned, the apostle tells us. And under the judgment of God as a result of this revelation, because God is made known in that general revelation, but men choose to suppress the truth of the knowledge of God that they have given to them. They refuse to glorify God as God. They continue in their unthankful way. They change the truth for a lie and turn to idolatry, 
worshipping the creature rather than the creator. They turn from the truth to from the living God, whom they know only too well, says the apostle, because he's made it clear to them, shown it to them. And he says they even clearly understand it. Because they don't like God. That's the heart of the matter. So they're not seeking him as they should. They're not loving God as they should. They're suppressing the truth. So they dream up philosophies of men like um, evolution, religion such as Islam and Buddhism and Confucianism and and all of that, of course, is, is, is not a seeking for or a loving of the truth, um, but rather a rejection of the truth and a turning to lies. So salvation, you see, is not through God's general revelation. It's only through the gospel, only through the special revelation of God. And we need to be clear on this. The church... Christians need to be clear in this. A man can wonder, he can be gobsmacked, you know. Uh, he looks at creation, he looks at the universe he lives in, he looks at the world he lives in, and, and, and he can see it all. And he, he's filled with awe and wonder at God's creative activity. But that cannot bring him to salvation. General revelation cannot do that. We need to be absolutely clear. Only in Christ and in the revelation of Jesus Christ in the Holy Scripture can a man, can a woman be saved. General revelation, creation, only increases man's guilt. Only those who hear and believe the gospel the revelation of God in Jesus Christ, God's special revelation, the Word of God, as I've read to you in uh, my Confession of Faith. God has revealed Himself, there you see, in Holy Scripture, as a Saviour. Speech, God speaks, you see, God spoke and brought the universe, the world, everything into being. And his speech is the means by which he communicates with and to us, his fallen creatures. Speaking of his grace, he speaks to man. He speaks to us in Holy Scripture of himself. What is he like? Scripture, the Word of God, the Bible. He is infinite, he is great, he is just, he is righteous, but he is compassionate, he is merciful, he is kind. And he speaks uh, with our limited, imperfect speech in, in a way that we can understand, we can comprehend. But not just a means of communication, you know, but a means by which you and I can have fellowship with him, the living, the true and living God, the unseen, invisible God. Because um, he is to be seen, he is to be found in the person of his son, Jesus Christ. And these, the Holy Scriptures, that are they, he tells us, which testify of, of him. So, you know, as a man knows and loves the voice of his wife um, above others, so we really do come uh, to to know and to hear uh, and to to love the voice of God speaking to us in the lines of Scripture, not just the marks on the page, but the living, abiding Word of God. The Lord Jesus Christ termed in the New Testament as the living word. You see, he, he begins to take on visible form, becomes tangible. God, his special revelation revealing 
himself as the living unseen God in the person of Jesus Christ the Son the Word made flesh condescension mercy it would be more fitting for God to you would think wouldn't you to just abandon us forsake us why bother I mean you know and yet he speaks to us in, in terms of peace, in terms of reconciliation. God was in Christ reconciling the world to himself. It's the result of the connection between the word, the living word, and the written word, the read word of God, or the preached word of God, that a person comes to know God in saving terms, in terms of love, favour, only through the written word of God can any person come to know the living word of God. But of course to read the word of God, the written word of God, to read that and not understand and not find Jesus Christ there of course, well then, you've read it without understanding. And what you need to do then, of course, is to cry out to God for enlightenment, for understanding. That he would help you to see and to find Christ there in his scriptures. So these scriptures are not to be doubted. The Bible is the Word of God. Chapter, uh, chapter 1 and section 4 of the Westminster Confession of Faith says this, The authority of the Holy Scriptures for which it ought to be believed and obeyed depends not upon the testimony of any man or church, but wholly upon God who is truth itself, the author thereof, and therefore it is to be received because it is the Word of God. <laughs> You're to believe the Bible because the Bible says you're to believe it. <laughs> you say that's circular reasoning. Yes, it is. <laughs> it's an epic example of circular reasoning. So what? Get over it. You're to believe the Bible because the Bible says you are to believe it and not doubt it. By these scriptures, the word of God alone, God has been pleased to make himself known savingly. The word of God, the special revelation of God, without which we can't know God. We can't know squat about God ourselves, heaven, hell, sin and salvation. So read the word of God and pray and ask God for light and for understanding.